Firstly, on some numbers then, Cient in fact reported what was a mixed set of numbers this quarter with a miss on the revenue front and a beat on the margins. Krishna Burdanapu, the MD and CEO of Cient, now joins in to detail the performance. Hi Krishna, thank you very much for joining in this uh, afternoon. Can you just start by talking about the dollar revenue growth considering it was a decline of 2.6% this quarter. We do understand that Rankson's was one of the key reasons for the decline. Yes, good morning and thank you for having me on the show. But uh, yeah, the, the key decline was because of uh, Rankson's, which is a manufacturing subsidiary that we acquired uh, earlier in the year. There is a lot of seasonality of revenue in that particular business. That's something that we that uh, sort of is new to us in some ways because it, the services business doesn't have this level of seasonality, but you know manufacturing does have this level of seasonality. So that's what really drove the, the numbers. If you look at the core business, the, the what we call the engineering and the DNO business, that grew 1.6%. Uh, there's another business called Softential uh, within the DNO business that has some seasonality. So between these two issues around seasonality, we had the uh, drop. But the core business remains strong. We showed you know 1.6% growth in, in dollar terms, and we continue to be quite bullish about that. Also, in terms of the, the, these two businesses around seasonality, we believe that uh, you know, based on pipeline and what we're seeing from, from the order book and so on and so forth, it's, it is just a Q1 issue. It's not a, it's not a structural issue and we'll have some good quarters going ahead. Krishna, good morning. I take your point, in fact, both on Rangsense and Softensial, but even for your core, uh, core growth, and I'm reading from a Morgan Stanley report, which believes that even then it was quite a bit of deceleration for you, 1.6% quarter-on-quarter growth and 10% year-on-year growth compared to 15% in FY15. So that's a concern they have raised. And the other concern they have raised is that uh, your margin outlook, which you have maintained, is a bit too optimistic right now. Um, in terms of the uh, growth, um, yeah, I mean, it is compared to 15%, it is a little bit slower, obviously, or it's a little bit lower. But again, if I look at the how the next few quarters look to be panning out, we're quite optimistic. I mean, we will see, you know, we will see better numbers in terms of quarterly growth. Uh, the year, yeah, it, it's quite difficult to comment at this point uh, if the year will be, you know, 10% year or a 15% year. But we're quite confident that it will be somewhere in the middle. Uh, last year was obviously a very good year for the business, and, and there were some structural things that happened last year that enabled growth also. But uh, from a from a um, from a growth perspective, uh, you know, we continue to be quite confident based on how the the uh, uh, um, how the pipeline and backlog uh, looks like. Now, coming to margins, if you look at it, uh, margins for this quarter were about 12.6% uh, at an operating level. Uh, that was actually a little bit better than what margins were last quarter. Now, Q1 had a, had a fairly significant salary impact. The salary impact itself would have affected us by about 250 or so basis points. Uh, because all salary corrections in the company as a policy are done at, at one go. They're done on uh, effective April 1st. So it was a, quite a significant uh, uh, headwind because of uh, the uh, salary increases that uh, have happened. But in spite of that, we actually got to be a little bit better on margins. Uh, typically, if you look at it historically, uh, Q1, our margins used to drop by about 200 to 300 basis points because of salary correction, and then they used to come up uh, over the course of the year. But this time around, we were able to maintain margins in spite of a salary correction. So what I had said is last year we did 14.5, or sorry, 14.6% uh, uh, overall margin, 14.9% in the core business. So having, you know, coming off a relatively good quarter, looking at what things look like, having a fl at least a flat year in terms of margins is, is is quite uh, reasonable, but also getting margins to improve by about 100 basis points year on year, which is what we had commented um, as the outlook, is quite possible. I mean, we're starting off with a pretty good quarter compared okay. to what it was previously. Okay. Uh, Krishna, I just wanted a f couple of figures from you. You did mention 10 to 15 percent core revenue growth for the entire fiscal. Is that correct? Uh, on on a constant currency basis, yes. Okay. And what do you think that you could do on a consolidated basis with your subsidiaries? Um, I'd rather not comment on that now uh, because, you know, we're still trying to get a good understanding of how the cyclicality works. Like I said, you know, Rankson's is something new for us. It's very important for our business. It's a very core part of our strategy. But before, uh, you know, commenting on, on the 
are, are giving a, a guideline of how things might uh, pan out. I'd, I'd wait for a quarter or two to just make sure that we clearly understand the cyclicality that we can communicate rather than communicate something that's not very accurate. Okay. Krishna, if you could at least tell us in terms of the, the new acquisition that you have planned in terms of uh, the, the potential size or revenues of the, the company that you intend to acquire. Uh, honestly, I can't comment on that at all. It's, uh, we have an LOI in place. Uh, we are working hard towards getting it to closure. But as you know, with these things, uh, it's, a, it's unfortunately a black and white thing. It either happens or doesn't. So I shouldn't comment on that at this point. So okay. If it happens, so, so is, is there a good chance that uh, in the next two quarters, it happens or it does not happen, one of the two, two ways? Uh, it, it will most likely, if it happens or not, will be this quarter. Okay, just a quick bookkeeping question then. What is your cash and books? Uh, cash and books is roughly 630 crores in signed. With Rongsons, it's about 670 crores. Okay. All right, Krishna. We leave it.